game. And even though it's been downgraded, Nicholas still bringing some nasty weather to the Gulf Coast communities. So who's bracing for the impacts of the storm now? A local initiative aiming to give dogs on their way to animal care services a new purpose by training them to help veterans. We have details this noon. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. It seems it won't be an easy case for San Antonio police who are investigating a hit and run crash. They say they have not found anyone yet who saw the car that ran down a man on a bicycle early this morning. It happened on the access road near Interstate 35 and West Pyron Avenue on the city's south side. As Katrina Weber tells us, the bicyclist survived and is being treated at a hospital. In a split second, a man on a bicycle went from the safety of a sidewalk to what proved to be a danger zone, the Interstate 35 access road in the dark of night. 35-year-old had been pedaling north near West Pyron Avenue around 4 this morning, but San Antonio police say he lost his balance due to the weight of what he was carrying in his arms, a duffel bag and television. They say it sent him off the curb onto the access road where a car hit him, then kept going. The man went to a hospital by ambulance, leaving behind what was left of his bike. Investigators went to work, looking through the debris for even the smallest of clues that the driver may have left behind. In order to piece together this case, police may have to count on those pieces of the car they found here for clues. They say right now they haven't found anyone who saw this crash. That includes the victim's girlfriend who was riding behind him on another bicycle. She told police she never saw what or who hit him. While his bicycle may have come to the end of its road, police say the man's injuries did not appear to be life-threatening. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this noon, police trying to track down multiple suspects after two people were stabbed. Officers tell us around 8 last night they found the victims in a car in the 5800 block of Calabra Road. That's near, near Callahan Road on the west side. Police say the suspects pulled into the parking lot where the victims were and then started stabbing them. It's not clear what motivated that attack. Police say the suspects then took off down Callahan Road. The victims were taken to the hospital. One man in critical condition. The other man should be okay. We want to bring you the latest on Hurricane Nicholas. Now he's a tropical storm making landfall all along the coast all overnight. The category one storm creating a storm surge as well as some dangerous flooding. ABC's Rita Roy reports hundreds of thousands of people had to deal with power outages too. Flash floods and storm surge turning streets into rivers in coastal Texas. Nicholas making landfall as a Category 1 hurricane near Galveston overnight with winds up to 70 miles per hour. The top of this gas station falling over. ABC chief meteorologist Ginger Z on the ground as it moved in. The front shield of Nicholas has just started coming in, but the storm is still more than 100 miles to our southwest, and you can just see that irritated Gulf of Mexico. This is only the beginning. Relentless rain coming down for hours, water pouring into businesses. So right now what we're doing is a damage assessment throughout the city, identifying what's, what areas are going to need uh, what areas have been damaged. A reporter with ABC sister station KTRK battling through rough conditions in Freeport as the storm got closer. We have a long way to go tonight. Port O'Connor dealing with destruction even before Nicholas touched down. Fences down, trees down, roofs off. It's coming. It's built up big. The governor of Texas issuing a disaster declaration for at least 17 counties with resources on standby, including boat teams and rescue aircrafts. Multiple towns across the western Gulf Coast under flash flood watches. Louisiana is now bracing for the impacts of Nicholas just two weeks after Hurricane Ida slammed into the state. The big concern, once again, is possible life-threatening flooding hitting the area. President Biden already approving an emergency declaration there in addition to the one that already exists for Ida. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Outside with Black Cam, you see those pictures from the Gulf Coast. A lot of rain and some flooding down there. Then you look at these pictures here, and it's like beautiful. Yep. I, know. I had a friend call me from Louisiana. She said it is pouring over there. 
And she said, y'all are driving, you're driving in the rain right now. And I said, no, clear skies. Clear skies pretty. for us. Yeah. And in fact, you bring up a good point there, uh, Ursula. It's Louisiana that's now going to be dealing with the brunt of Nicholas, which is essentially just going to be a tropical rainstorm for them, producing a lot of rain out there even right now as we speak. But we have been on the dry side of Nicholas this morning. It was really pleasant, 68 for the morning low, but we've warmed up really nicely. 84 five degrees outside right now. We do have winds from the north and humidity is not all that bad. Dew points are in the upper 60s. It could be a lot worse this time of year, uh, but as you can see, we're also starting to see some cumulus clouds developing out there as well. We started off the day completely sunny. Let's take a look at some temperatures out there right now. 83 in Yavalli, 86 in Beeville, still in the 70s up in Kerrville, 79 degrees. Here is Tropical Storm Nicholas. Uh, it is again. Look at all the rain that it's producing for Louisiana, and that's not going to stop anytime soon. Currently, winds of 45 miles per hour, but you can see we're clearly on the dry side of this system. So in the week ahead for the remainder of the week, we're going to have pretty nice and summery weather. I'll have a look ahead coming up and some videos from our Justin Horn, who was live uh, at Port O'Connor yesterday. We'll show you those videos in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Tonight, CBS Energy wants to hear from you. It's holding a Teletown Hall. During the event, CBS officials are going to be answering consumer questions and gathering up feedback. It's also a chance for people to learn more about CBS Energy's initiatives to introduce newer and cleaner technologies to meet San Antonio's energy needs. The Town Hall starts at 7 tonight. It ends at 8 tonight. Customers interested in participating can register on the CPS Energy website. Those who register will receive a call before the program starts, and they can listen in on their phone or even watch it online. Canines for Warriors. It is a nonprofit organization that partners with service dogs and partners those dogs with veterans to treat military service related trauma like PTSD. The goal of the organization is to prevent veteran suicides. And as Max Massey shows us, Canines for Warriors has a new facility here in Military City, USA, and hopes to help as many local veterans as possible. I served in the Army for 20, uh, just shy of 27 years. Uh, served all over the world, basically, but uh, combat, I was in Afghanistan. Meet Bob Jones and his service dog, Grace. She has been my lifeline. She uh, alerts me when I've been triggered by something and I don't realize I've been triggered, whether it's been a, a memory or, or something I see along the side of the road or something. Um, she grounds me and brings me back to the here and now. Bob met Grace through the Canines for Warriors program about five years ago and Grace changed his life. It is a scientifically proven that service dogs reduce uh, symptoms of PTSD. I am off all my medications now and uh, I can, am re-engaged with society. And Canines for Warriors facility is actually strategically placed because, take a look over here, it is right next to Animal Care Services. We're going to be saving dogs from animal control services, training them to be amazing service dogs, and then pairing them with warriors right here in San Antonio. Already we saw 12 dogs in the Canines for Warriors kennels. The program brings the pups to full health and trains them for six to eight months. We can save about 30 dogs at a time, so maybe 200 in a year, and that'll probably turn out to be about 80 service dogs for veterans right here in Texas. The hope is to form 80 relationships just like Bob and Grace. She literally saved my life. Uh, approximately 20 veterans a day are committing suicide to PTSD symptoms, and uh, this is a challenge to that, and hopefully we can uh, reverse that. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. A local woman using her journey to create some work-life balance for herself to help others. Her tips for stress management coming up in the next half hour. And the Cowboys getting one started back, but losing two key guys. We'll explain coming up. It's Hispanic, uh, pardon me, Hispanic Heritage Month, and we are shining a light on notable Latinos. After the break, we're going to learn about a woman devoted to preserving San Antonio's history and how she became known as the Angel of the Alamo. September is Hispanic Heritage Month, and in this week's edition of Tejano Moments, we're taking a look at Adina Dezavala. 
She was an activist who wanted to preserve San Antonio history at all costs. KZ12 producer Rosalind Jimenez explains how De Zavala earned the nickname Angel of the Alamo. In her mind, it wasn't just exclusively where a battle had been fought, but more about all of the missions that had been built by the Franciscans and the Spanish. After realizing the missions in San Antonio were falling apart, Adina de Zavala knew she had to preserve history for the generations to come. But she couldn't do it alone. Adina uh, then meets this wonderful, beautiful young woman by the name of, name of Clara Driscoll from Corpus. Uh, she's a philanthropist, uh, an heiress uh, to a very large uh, ranching empire. Rudy Rodriguez, a local historian and founder of TexasTejano.com, says Clara and Adina became good friends, frequently meeting at places like the Minger Hotel downtown. Clara ended up giving Adina $75,000 to purchase the convento, the Alamos Long Barracks. But the state assumed the purchase and refunded Clara. Then there were some disagreements about the property. Clara believed the convento was an eyesore and a park should be put there in memory of the fallen defenders. Adina, on the other hand, felt that it was a historical building. The Alamo Mission Chapter won a lawsuit to remove the building. So, in February of 1908... She enters the building and padlocks. Uh, she has the locks changed. And so the world begins to discover, and I mean literally, because uh, the media, because the media frenzy uh, becomes national. Only a few days passed before Sheriff John Tobin told Adina she needed to get out of the convento. As she exited the building, Adina said, I did not surrender. I merely left matters in dispute to arbitration. And her fight continued. Eventually, her battle won. Sadly, Adina did not live to see the victory, dying in 1955. But for her efforts, she will always be known as the Angel of the Alamo. Rosalind Jimenez, KSA 12 News. Now this is actually part two of our segment spotlighting Adina de Safala. You can watch the first part right now on KSAT.com. Once again, outside with live cam, Nicholas didn't give a whole lot of rain to us, but he did leave us with some dry air, at least for a little while. Yeah, we can thank Nicholas for our cooler temperatures this morning, a really pleasant start to the day. The aquifer, though, down a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. We're still under those stage one water restrictions. And in the pollen count, this is some good news. Yesterday, molds in fall elm were moderate. Now they're low. We've got ragweed and pigweed present in low amounts as well. Coming up, the latest on Nicholas. But for us in San Antonio, more importantly, the latest on the next few days, the weather looks like it's going to be nice and summery. Okay, does anybody in the KSET studio know what a P-Rogue is? A what? A P-Rogue. Um, I, I have no don't idea. Know. Is it weather-related? I'm also thinking of pierogies, but... No, it's not something you eat. A it's something you, you get in when the water gets too high. I was going to say, spell it and use it in a sentence and see what we can do with it. <laughs> it's a, a carved out canoe, basically, Cajun oh. style. Oh, okay. Ooh. And, and uh, that's so, relevant because Louisiana is getting a lot yes, of rain. they are. And so people who have pierogues have them handy right now wow. in South Louisiana. You learn Go. something new every day. Thanks for that, Ursula. All right, let's take a look outside with our current conditions. We started off the day totally sunny, but you can see those clouds. David, weather question. Don't what are ask. those clouds called? Uh, cumulus. Pretty. <laughs> How about pretty cumulus? Pretty cumulus. Wow. I hope you guys got it right. And that was a total right. guess. Look at my cloud they're, chart now. <laughs> they're technically called fair weather cumulus, okay, but they are pretty. And the reason why I call them fair weather cumulus is because the weather is fair outside and they're not growing in the vertical, right? If we had these cumulus clouds growing in the vertical, that would be indicative of a little bit of uh, instability in the atmosphere, which could lead to some showers and storms. These are shallow, all right? They're fair weather cumulus, pretty cumulus. And it's 85 degrees outside right now. North winds at 10 miles per hour. We started off in the upper 60s, so 
The atmosphere has effectively warmed up today. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. You can see those cumulus clouds starting to build uh, across areas in the hill country and also up toward Canyon Lake as well as east of San Antonio toward Gonzales, Nixon, Smiley and Floresville. But it is still completely sunny out toward Del Rio, Carrizo Springs, Uvalde, Rock Springs. Temperatures in most locations are in the 80s, upper 80s down near Catula and Laredo, still in the 70s out in Houston and in College Station. And in Houston, they're still still dealing with Tropical Storm Nicholas, although the major effects from Nicholas have now moved on off to the east. Still a tropical storm with winds of 45 miles per hour. But look at all this rain that's occurring across Louisiana. Ursula, they'll need their pierogues, right? Pierogues. Hey, got yes. it. OK, so again, Nicholas is, is it doesn't have any cold front or trough to quickly move it out of the way. So it is going to meander into to Louisiana over the next 48 hours is a tropical depression not getting out of the way and potentially dropping up to 10 inches of rain in many places in Louisiana. But earlier this morning, Nicholas was producing some strong winds across the Houston area, gusts of up to 63 miles per hour in downtown Houston, up to 62 in Galveston. And of course, Nicholas made landfall at Matagorda Bay uh, as a category one hurricane. Now, earlier this morning, it felt so great outside because we were seeing dry air being pulled in by Nicholas. Let's take you to the beginning of the loop. You can see this uh, orange color here. That's that dry air. That's why it was nice and comfortable. Uh, but you know, it's not too dry out there. Dew points are back in the mid to upper 60s. And so for the remainder of the day here, we're going to have some partly cloudy skies, a really nice afternoon, but it's going to get hot in the 90s. Then starting the day tomorrow, we'll have a few more clouds, mostly cloudy start right around 70 tomorrow morning. And then in the afternoon tomorrow, back into the low 90s, mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. For the rest of your Tuesday, here's what it looks like at 8, uh, pardon me, at 3 p.m. We'll be at 88 degrees, a bit breezy, north winds 10 to 15, gusting up to 20, right around 90 for the high temperature. Sun will set at 740, and we're going to have a mild evening dropping down into the 70s by midnight. Looking at tomorrow, 92, and then mid-90s as we round out the work week. Something to keep in mind, it's going to be fairly dry without a chance for rain over the next few days. And even then, by Sunday, our chance for rain is only 20%. Our sled, David. Ugh, getting dry out there. Thank you. By the way, I was never really good at pop quizzes. Well, clearly. <laughs> that is self-evident, David. <laughs> the Horns going for a different-looking quarterback, bringing in a veteran. And the Aggies have no choice but to start a different quarterback this weekend. Coming up. She could have given you a hint. She could have, yeah. It's a cloud. <laughs> Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys getting ready to travel to California this week, and there will be a few empty seats on the plane. First off, good news. Lineman Zach Martin is out of COVID protocol. He will be on the plane, but unfortunately, defensive end Randy Gregory won't be on the plane, at least as of now, because of his protocol with COVID. Another guy staying home, wide receiver Michael Gallup. He has been placed on injured reserve after suffering a calf strain during the Tampa Bay Buccaneers lost last Thursday night, meaning he's going to have to miss at least the next three weeks before he can return sometime in October. Head coach Mike McCarthy was asked how much it helps that Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb are so versatile. Well, it's really the flexibility of the whole group. I mean, I think it goes goes beyond CD and Amari. You know, and it really extends to Cedric. I mean, I think Cedric is as fine of a, of a young receiver, you know, that can play multiple positions. And, you know, in my, in my past experience, that that's, that's the only way we ever operated was every receiver had to play all four positions. You know, Noah Brown's the same way. And, and that's, that's, that's the format of how we're training all of our receivers as, as they come into our program. So, and this is one of the reasons why you do it that way. Yeah, they're going to need those other guys. The Cowboys travel to L.A. to face the Chargers on Sunday. 325 kickoff. After Saturday's big loss to Arkansas on the road, 40-21, some might have seen this coming. Longhorns head coach Steve Sarkeesian made a quarterback change. Hudson Card out, Casey Thompson in as the new starter. That's after Card struggled against the Razorbacks. He was only 8 of 15 passing, 61 yards. His night was done in the third quarter when he tried to scramble and Zach Williams knocked the ball out of his hand. That fumble led to a touchdown and insurmountable 33-7 lead. Card left with a 14.9 quarterback rating. Casey Thompson came in the game, led the Longhorns to two scoring drives. A little too late for him, though. The Horns' first loss of the season. 
both guys have been battling, both guys have been ke competing. I think it would be good for Hudson to take a little bit of a deep breath coming off of last week's game. And it would be a great opportunity for, uh, for Casey to step in and, uh, and battle and compete with the ones early on in the ball game. So I uh, feel good about that. Timing of the switch kind of interesting though, since they host Rice Saturday at 7 o'clock. And the fight in Texas Aggies also making a change of quarterback because they have to. Their game day starter Saturday, Haynes King, has a crack in his lower leg, according to his head coach, repaired with surgery, and he'll be out at least a month. It happened in the first quarter. The Aggies come from behind win against Colorado and Denver when King was brought down by Colorado linebacker Guy Thomas. King was back on the sideline on crutches and is now out until mid-October. That means Zach Calzada is the Aggies' new starting quarterback after leading the maroon and white to the game-winning touchdown. Only Aggie TD. That was an 18-yard pass to running back Isaiah Spiller. They end up winning the game 10-7. to We put together a 13-play drive and go all the way down and lose the ball on a half-yard line going in the end zone. Instead of putting her head down, come back and make an 11-play 77-yard drive and win the game. I mean, there's still a lot of perseverance in that. And for a quarterback to be able to do that after having a tough day, struggling the things he did, and we made some tight, we started, we weren't making contested throws, all of a sudden we did. Start making contested catches, all of a sudden we did. Start breaking tackles, all of a sudden we did. Making blocks, all of a sudden we did. Finding ways to get it done. And there's something to be said about that. So new starting quarterbacks for Texas and the Aggies. The narrow defeat of Colorado has dropped the Aggies to seventh in the Associated Press College Football Poll where they host New Mexico on Saturday at 11. Texas dropped completely out of the top 25. A woman in our community not only found ways to de-stress, but she's sharing what she's learned with others, how she's helping people so they can reach their full potential. And prices at the grocery store continue to rise. They're predicted to climb through the end of the year. What products will see the biggest price increases coming up after the break? More children now testing positive for coronavirus every week. Nearly a half million children in just the last two weeks. But there are some hopeful signs in highly vaccinated states. In the last week, children accounting for nearly 30% of COVID cases and some school districts are dealing with COVID-related staff shortages. One community in Massachusetts calling on the National Guard to help drive the school buses. At issue now, how to handle infections in the classroom. The debate playing out as many parents anxiously wait for the vaccine to be green-lighted for those kids younger than 12. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says that vaccine for young kids comes perhaps by the end of the year. Kids, you know, are a special group. They require important, you know, long-term safety data to make sure that we're giving the right vaccine to the right kids. Excuse me. And with all eyes on possible vaccine boosters, officials have said older Americans and healthcare workers could be first in line if and when they are approved. The UK is going to be offering a third dose of COVID-19 vaccine to everyone over 50 and other vulnerable people. This comes after an expert panel said the boosters were needed to increase immunity this winter. The health secretary told lawmakers that the government had accepted the recommendation of the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunization. Booster shots will be offered starting next week. The World Health Organization has asked wealthy nations to delay booster shots until every country has vaccinated at least 40 percent of their populations. Inflation is still rising, but not as quickly as it had been rising. Tuesday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported August was the second straight month in which the inflation rate fell slightly. Consumer prices rose 5.3 percent in August. That's less than the increases noted in June and July. The rate, though, still higher than the Federal Reserve's target, which is around 2 percent. The Fed had signaled that it plans to move away from some of the changes that it made last year to stimulate the economy during the pandemic. And speaking of prices, experts predict grocery prices, which are already rising, will soar even higher later this year. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis takes a look at the prices that we could see at some of the country's biggest supermarkets. 
If you've been inside of a supermarket like this one in the last six months, you felt it. Grocery prices are rising and they're predicted to continue climbing through the end of this year. Kroger, one of the largest grocery chains in the country, says that their inflation will soon become customers' inflation in the coming months. As we've seen these prices climb at grocery stores across the country, they are expected to continue climbing there as well. One of the biggest culprits is beef prices, meat prices. Beef prices are up 14% so far this year. Pork prices versus last year up 12%. Poultry up 6.6%. And it's not just there. It's also in the fresh fruit aisle. Those prices up 5.2% from last year. One of the few areas that's seen price decreases over the last year are fresh vegetables. Those are down 0.6% in prices. But the overall story here are supply shortages. We're seeing issues with the supply chain, labor shortages, the cost cost of transportation and warehousing is rising. Kroger even says it's dealing with theft and that's driving up prices. And then we have weather. You know that we've seen these big storms recently. That has led to some supply shortages, which in turn increases prices for consumers. For ABC News, Rebecca Jarvis, New York. Live look outside, pretty fair weather, cumulus clouds. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm showing off now. The weather pop quiz earlier. I win. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. Got to grab whatever you can, right? <laughs> you no, know, I'll take credit for it. <laughs> All right. I do want to show an update of where Tropical Storm Nicholas is. It's uh, moving just to the east of uh, Houston right now. But as you can see, the winds with Nicholas uh, are not necessarily the biggest issue. It's, it's the amount of rain right now that Louisiana is getting. Now, Overnight, uh, Nicholas made landfall near Matagorda Bay as a Category 1 hurricane. And all day yesterday, our meteorologist Justin Horn was out there, and this is what he 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 saw while he was there. Obviously, some damage here with a trampoline and a snapped tree. But this is one of my favorite videos that he took. He was right at near the eye there, where you can see the sun shining through at sunset. And look at the palm trees there taking on the brunt of those. Um, at that time, it was nearly a hurricane. It was still a tropical storm about to be upgraded to a hurricane. He recorded a wind gust of about 80 one miles per hour out there. This is one of the uh, houses that sustained a lot of damage. You can see the storm surge that came up there along Port O'Connor and then uh, the roof of this house was blown off. You can see the shingles in the roof there uh, right on the ground. Justin, he just got back. I just saw him there a second ago, so uh, he was doing good, safe work out there. Now for the rest of our Tuesday, it's going to be nice and quiet for us here in San Antonio. It's warm. We're already at 80 five degrees and will likely be near 90 uh, during the peak heating hours of the day in the next couple of hours. Sun sets at 741. It's going to be a mild evening. Breezy too. Winds from the north 10 to 15 and occasional gusts up to 20 miles per hour is possible. But coming up, I'll show you the aquifer and the pollen count. Some good news in the pollen count today in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Today, voters in California continue casting votes in a recall election. This comes after a push to oust current Governor Gavin Newsom has gained momentum. Newsom has faced criticism for his handling of COVID and record wildfires over the past two years. There are 46 challengers. All of them want to replace him. Talk show host Larry Elder, by far the leading candidate. Elder wants to roll back most of the state's COVID restrictions. He says one of his first moves in office would be to end mandates for state employees to get vaccinated and wear masks. Yesterday, President Joe Biden joined Governor Newsom on the campaign trail, asking a final plea to voters. The eyes of the nation are on California because the decision you're about to make isn't this going to have that's going to have a huge impact on California and it's going to reverberate around the nation. Voters uh, will choose the governor of California who could then decide a replacement for 88 year old Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein. And that would tip the balance in what is right now an evenly split U.S. Senate. Your journey to a better you doesn't have to take you far. In fact, it can start right here in San Antonio. Still ahead, a local business that helps you craft the perfect plan to help you conquer your stress. Walgreens now warning customers they've had a data breach. What information may have been exposed after the break?
everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. A word of caution to iPhone users. An Israeli spyware company has found a way to hack iPhones since February, and that's just through a simple text message. Research group Citizen Lab made the discovery. Israel's NSO group was able to silently infect any Apple product through iMessage without anybody knowing or being able to prevent it. Apple released a software update fixing the hacking vulnerability and is encouraging users to update their iPhones. Meanwhile, some troubling news. If you got a COVID test over at Walgreens, as reports are showing patients personal data, including their names, date of birth, phone number, and addresses, were left on the open web. The data exposure potentially applies to millions of people who use the company's COVID testing services throughout the pandemic. Security experts investigated and found the vulnerabilities on the site were basic issues that the pharmacy chain should have known to avoid. And Fox Entertainment is buying tabloid website TMZ from AT&T's Warner Media unit. The deal will also transfer all of TMZ's assets to Fox and is reportedly valued at 50 million dollars. The Wall Street Journal reported last month the two were in talks that would value TMZ between 100 and 125 million, much more than the reported sale. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. And you might remember a segment right here on the News at Noon called New Week, New You, a health and wellness segment with unique, low cost and important ways to be healthy. Well, we're bringing it back with the same mission in mind to inspire you to be the best version of yourself, whether that's something physical, mental, or spiritual. And for many people, stress might be what's holding you back from your full potential. In today's new you, K-12 producer Priscilla Caraman shows how a local woman built a business aimed at helping you de-stress and find that inner peace. Take a deep breath in. My name is Lisa Holloway. I'm the owner of Mindful Peace Self-Care Institute. And breathe out. My journey to a better me really started when I moved here to San Antonio um, back in 2016. I didn't put my health you know, as important because I wanted to be that good employee. I came to work on my days off. I worked every holiday, every weekend, extra shift, double shifts, you know, and that takes a toll on your body and your body will start sending signals, hey, slow it down. Lisa is a corporate supervisor by day. Struggling with the stress of the job, she was looking for ways to decompress. I started really with Facebook group, you know, young professional women, and it started like we were venting. <laughs> and then someone was like, you know what, you need to really take care of yourself. And they begin to talk about self-care. I'm like, self-care? You know, what is that? <laughs> Growing up, that's not something we were taught, you know, taking care of yourself. We had, my family have a strong worth ethic. You go to work, even if you're sick. And it was kind of like frowned upon if you took a day off. In her quest to create some work-life balance for herself, Lisa learned skills she knew she needed to share. I want to be there to help those who are struggling with stress, that they don't have to do this alone, that there are tools and resources out there to help you. Whether it's stress from work or family, Lisa uses in-depth questionnaires to build the perfect program for each client. When the pandemic hit, just months after starting her business, she quickly integrated meditation into her programs. Using the guided meditation is a great place to start. Taking a deep breath for calmness and breathe out any tension or stress. It walks you through whatever type of scenario that you're going through, whether you want to be calm, whether you're angry, you're sad. There's a different meditation for a different type of, of emotion. Stress isn't just, I just need to suck it up. Stress management is something you have to really work on so that it doesn't start to affect you mentally, physically, emotionally, and even socially and spiritually. In this moment, we focus only on our calmness and our peacefulness. Priscilla Caraman, KSAT 12 News. Lisa also shared some basic tips to maintain your work-life balance. She says whether you're an intern or the CEO, set some boundaries. Limit when you can be reached, what hours you will work, and if you're working from home, close the door to the office when you're off the clock. 
Another thing she emphasized is to take your paid time off and use it to relax and enjoy yourself, even if it's as small as just getting a massage or taking a walk. You can find more information on Mindful Peace Institute on our website, ksat.com. I feel kind of relaxed now. I know, that's yeah. some good music. Yeah, I like okay. that. Good tips. What, would you believe me if I told you that I can do some meditations with my cat? Really? I'm, so yeah. Your cat meditates or you just meditate? Well, she just kind of like sits there and is a calm presence while I'm in. I feel that way about horses. There they you go. calm me way down if I'm just... Horse gal? Walking. Cat gal. <laughs> That's the way it is. All right. It's a dog guy. <laughs> dog guy. There you go. All right. Well, the aquifer is now a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. Here's the good. Whoa. I accidentally picked the wrong one. Here's the good news. OK, even though mold and fall elm were moderate yesterday, this is yesterday's fallen count. They've actually gone down and now molds, fall elm, ragweed and pigweed are all low. I'll show you that updated fallen count right after the break, as well as your forecast. So yeah, over in Louisiana right now, they've got their boats handy. They're watching Is it the, the Cajun water. Navy working again. Those guys they're are on, they're on, they're on duty, Man. and and it doesn't, you know, they can take a lot of rain, but they they're already so saturated. They are. It's and been a it's, rainy, yeah. rainy summer there. They're like, well, we might as well go to the grocery store, fill up again. Or... And, you know, they're weather weary because of Ida. Yeah. Yeah, Ida just are. happened a, a few weeks ago. So they're dealing with all the rain from Nicholas now. It's going to be a rainstorm essentially for them, not necessarily wind. But, yeah, before the break, I showed you yesterday's pollen count. Here's today's pollen count. This is the good news. Molds and fall elm are down from yesterday. They are low. Ragweed and pigweed are low as well. For the rest of the day today, it's going to be a nice rest of the day. We're going to be looking at a high temperature right near 90 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Sun will set at 741 and temperatures will drop down into the 70s by 10 p.m. We have dry air to thank uh, Nicholas to thank for the dry air this morning. It was very, very nice. This is a look at this morning's lows. We got down to 68 in San Antonio, two degrees cooler than the average 61 in Kerrville, 63 in Rock Springs and New Braunfels. It was in the 60s as well, uh, but now things have warmed up really nicely. We're we're at 85 degrees. Uh, we were at 84 in Uvalde, 86 in Carrizo Springs. You can see the clouds from Nicholas here. We're getting some cumulus clouds uh, moving in and we'll have partly cloudy skies for the remainder of the day in this tonight, though, it should clear out nicely. Here is Tropical Storm Nicholas, still technically a tropical storm with winds of 45 miles per hour, but this is now effectively a rainstorm. Uh, it is bringing a lot of rain to Louisiana, as we were just mentioning these all of these areas a little weather weary from uh, Hurricane Ida, especially the New Orleans area, which as you can see is just going to continue to get rain and more of it over the next 48 hours or so because Nicholas is going to not move all that much over the next 48 hours as a tropical depression and bring potentially up to 10 inches of rain in spots uh, in uh, southeastern Louisiana. There's no cold front or anything to knock it out of the way. There's no upper level trough to really knock it out of the way. It's just going to be meandering over Louisiana. Now it's already produced a lot of rain for uh, the Galveston area up to 10 inches and it was moving at that point. So imagine how much rain it's going to produce for uh, parts of Louisiana. The tropics are heating up. Uh, they're still very, very active. Uh, we are in the middle of the peak of Atlantic hurricane se season, and we've got two systems that are likely to develop over the next five days, potentially uh, Tropical Storm Odette, and then eventually Tropical Storm Peter there in the Atlantic. But here in San Antonio, we've got really nice weather, dry weather though, over the next few days, and it will be a little warm uh, for the rest of the day. As I mentioned, just partly cloudy skies and a little toasty this afternoon. And then by the start of the day tomorrow, we'll have mostly cloudy skies right near 70 tomorrow morning. Uh, and in the afternoon tomorrow, we'll be topping off in the low 90s for the high with a little bit more sunshine in the afternoon. No significant rain chance over the next few days. And even by Sunday and Monday, we do have to introduce a 20% chance for rain, but that's it. 20% no big rainmakers in our immediate future and temperatures will rebound into the mid to upper 90s by the end of the work week. At least the weekend looks good for any kind of outdoor activities. We'll be back with more news after the break.